few of y'all have asked this question on some of our videos and we're gonna do our best to answer it. What's up everybody? Today's video is brought to you by Coop Defender. Coop Defender is a maker of high quality chicken coop automatic doors. So this device is programmable and it also can be set to work off of the light outside and will open and close based on the light outside. It works off of four AA batteries and it has a low battery warning light so that you know if the battery is getting low that you can replace them so that it will continue to work. The Coop Defender comes with a one year warranty and one of the coolest things for us that we were excited about is this uh, product was designed by Texans. I hope you can see that. And they're um, located right here in North Texas, just a little ways down the road from us. So we were very excited to partner with them and um, uh, uh, let them sponsor one of our videos. So um, we're going to take this out. As you guys know, we um, turned our garden shed, half of it, into a large walk in chicken coop. So we're going to go out and install this on there and show y'all how easy it is. Uh, looking at the instructions, it looks super, super simple. Um, so we're gonna run out there real quick and get it installed and y'all can come along with us. Alright guys, we got it installed. Uh, for anybody that's new to the channel, got the family that's been in lawn chairs watching me back there, see them? They've been my, they've been my support team. Um, anybody that doesn't know, we turned our old uh, garden shed here, we turned about half of it into a walk-in chicken coop. So I want to show you all that real quick. It's going to get dark when we go in here, but you'll be able to see. Our son's dirt bike is in here because it was raining a couple days ago. So this is the back probably third of our garden shed. I had a loft up there and we basically used the top of that loft, um, used the loft as the top of the coop and framed it in. We were needing a new chicken coop and we were debating on whether we were gonna tear this garden shed down or not and just do away with it. Um, but we decided we would keep it for storing things that we didn't want in our good shed and also the chicken coop. So this is the inside. Not sure how well you can see it. Alright y'all, uh, once I got uh, figured out how the brackets go for the door this was a super quick um, super simple install um, just took a little bit of time to figure out how they go um, I'll, I'll give you a close-up here so these are actually these screws are actually on the inside of the track where the door is you can see that and then these up here at the top on the outside so the door has more clearance um instructions are great uh that part it's it's there's it's kind of hard to really explain how to do that um i just took me a minute to kind of play with them and figure it out got that done then the rest of it it was just super quick putting in uh four screws for the door and the frame and then putting in four screws for the unit and then setting the unit up. We've ran it, cycled it a couple times. It's closing, opening, and great. We want to say a big thank you to Coop Defender. 
All their information will be in the description of this video. They're here local in Texas, which we love uh, to support people locally. Uh, go check them out. Tell them 5M Family Homestead sent you. Uh, Coop Defenders, thank y'all very much. Hey guys, Tobin and Shanna here, 5M Family Homestead channel. <laughs> you, I think you do the intro sometimes more than I do. You wanna do it? No, because it sounds better when you do it. Okay. It seems more intro -y. So we're out here in our new shed office. The slash is quite spectacular. It does look good in here. Slash uh, video and room. So <clears throat> we've had a couple videos, I guess you could say, go viral on Facebook. And <clears throat> um, on, on, and, and on those videos, we have, we're taking our feeder pigs that we raised to the processor. And in those videos, we talked about how we loved them, how we cared for them. And a lot of people had negative and hateful comments about how could we, how could we love an animal and then eat it? How could we have a pet and then take it and have it slaughtered? Um, how could we, how could we claim to love them, but then do that to them? Is that some, fair? Yeah. Well, some even compared it to having a, our dog and taking it, into yeah. it which. Yeah, so we don't feel like we have to justify ourselves to anybody, but it is a, it is a, and I can see how some people can pose that question and it'd be an honest question. And so we're trying to answer it as best we can, and it's gonna be difficult, but we're gonna answer it as best we can, just to give perspective and um, context to what we do. And so what prompted us to make this video is if you're watching our channel recently, we just added three more feeder pigs to our homestead. Two of those pigs belong to other people that are friends of ours. They were raising, we are raising them for them. One of them belongs to us. And we also uh, added uh, meat chickens and we're hatching well. quail for meat. Um, so all of those animals will be raised here. Yep. We will show them love. We will love them. Um, we will show them kindness and respect. And but ultimately, they will, will be our food. So I'll, I'm gonna say this real quick, and I'm gonna let Chen, I'm gonna turn over to her and let her give you all her perspective on the first feeder pig that we raised. I've grown up hunting, and um, as a younger age, never really thought much about um, the emotions and everything that went into hunting. Um, as I got older, I did. Um, and it's the same with hunting. I can say I care for deer. Um, I care for them in a way that probably people that don't hunt will never understand. But at the same time, I do shoot them and um, eat them and enjoy that process. And that's a hard thing to put into words. But going through that for, for so long in my childhood and my adult life, it, it, for me it's made this process of raising animals to be ultimately butchered easier for me, I guess. Um, not, not easier, but um, I don't know what the right word is. It just, it's made, it, it's not as, it's, 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 it's different for me having that background than maybe for you. There's a slight detachment. Yeah. From the emotion of taking the life of the animal. Yeah. So So I grew up <clears throat> well for most of y'all don't may or may not know. Tobin and I have been together for twenty five years. We met when we were sixteen. Um so I've grown when we first started dating, through our marriage, hunting has been a huge part of our family. Um all three of our kids hunt that was a new thing for me when we first got together but it's always been something that i have respected in a way because there was there's nothing that is harvested whether it be deer hunting um, dove hunting fishing any of that is harvested for any other purpose other than to provide for our family me so now i don't like I have shot animals before. As I've gotten older, 
Um, I don't get to do that as often, but it's not an easy thing to sit there and take a life of an animal. I don't want to like um, brush over that. It's not something, and I know somebody's gonna come back and say, okay, then why do you do it? Um, but there's a respect for the animal and there's a respect for what that animal is gonna give us in return. Um, it's There are people out there that give hunters a bad name. They will kill for the purpose of just for fun and they have they waste the meat and that is I think a lot of times what gives the hunters a bad name now as far as harvesting our own animals it was tough it he has been trying to convince me for several years now to do this and I just like many people couldn't wrap my brain around having an animal here on our property raising it from a baby taking it having it processed um, it was a very hard concept for me to wrap my brain around and then enters 2020 and it was one of those things where I was very very aware with the food shortages that we all encountered during the pandemic during the pandemic that we had to become more self-sufficient and self-sustaining it was a fact so I had to set my feelings aside and know that to provide food for our family it was gonna have to be something I was gonna have to put every emotion aside and keep it in a reality check almost so our first pig we got it was a baby I mean I, I want to say we it was like it two months at, old we brought it home yeah maybe a month we brought it home it just been weaned and a small at, at dog, a dog kennel. Yeah. it was so small yeah. and we raised it we took it to the processor and when we dropped her off and I will not lie to you, I, I was up that entire night thinking of what the next day was going to hold for her. Um, and the next day, like knowing when she was going to be processed. It was, it was a tough thing for me yeah. just to go through the motions. But then, the, the ultimate gift that was given back to us is when we picked up all the meat. Yeah. Um, the whole back seat of my car was full of meat that we raised we knew where it came from you know, we knew and how it was treated how yes. it was handled how and know. there's a lot of our videos people are have so many reasons to think that we mis mis mistreat these animals mm -hmm. and it could not be further from the truth i will tell you right now as long as i live on this property there will not be an animal that's mistreated on this yeah. property and the, the um people there have been people question the size of our pen we do not pasture raise our pigs. They are pen raised, and um, our the three pigs we have right now, um, the size of the pen that they're in. If they were in a pork production facility, they would have 30 pigs in a pen that size. And I'm not exaggerating. You can do the math. Google it. Google it. Look it up. Pork production and square footage per, per pig, and see what they recommend. It's like four square foot per pig in a pork production facility. Four to six square feet. That's literally enough room for them to stand. Um, so, um, you know, they are, they have, they are cared for, they have plenty of, of space. Our, our first pig did not, we realized that. Looking back, we both regret the... Well, he had, he had enough to, to what a pork production standard was, but um, it, need, it needed to be bigger. Yes, so we do look back on that and we do regret that. So we have slowly um, done our part in making sure these pigs have more room. Um, would we like them pasturized? Absolutely. Yes. But we are on a very small property. We're on yeah. one acre. And if you've seen our, our property, we have it strategically placed everything on yeah. the property the best that we can. Um, so to go back to once we got the meat, um, there was a huge, is it gratification, pride? pride. pride. Um, There's a whole bunch of yeah. adjectives that you could describe the feeling of knowing that that animal was yes. raised on our property, yeah. gave us the ultimate sacrifice and provide for our family. And I I didn't have a problem eating it. I, 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 I was surprised with that. I thought you would, but it was very no, natural. No, because... And the kids don't either. Nobody really... It's... Cause I, it's Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just thinking, and I explain this to people, and it doesn't make any sense. There's a certain detachment. In a weird way, Once, when we dropped her off, yeah. she was alive, I still, yeah. in a weird way, am like, that's how I remember it, so it's not like I don't it, really remember. So, some people may say, well, why don't we do it ourselves? Why don't we that's, kill them ourselves? Why don't we process them ourselves? We'll do that. 
if we won't but if we had to we could yeah we have we have shot our own mm -hmm. deer and we have taken them from a full-size animal and broke them down into small packages of meat and we have we have everything to do that with and if, if times were to get bad enough and we yeah, had to we could we could but we choose to have a process to do that for multiple reasons they're more efficient at it they they the cuts are better and the meat is better it's not wasting um, less yeah, waste um it, it, it is a very very large undertaking to do that on an animal that's 300 pounds on a deer that's 100 pounds it's very very Hard. Yeah, and I guess the question is how could you do it for a deer and not do it for a pig? And I can't tell you the difference. I've watched all of my kids harvest a deer, skin them, break them down. Um, I, I don't, I can't tell you the difference. Because it would be, you would take, you know, you would dispatch the pig the same way you would a deer. Yeah. I just, I, I, I don't watched, know why. There, there's other homesteaders. I, I watched a homesteader that they, they did it with a 22. They literally fed it and did it while it was, yeah. you know. And so we're somewhere in the middle on that. You know, mm -hmm. we're not all the way, but um, one of the things that one of our, and this really hit home with me, one of our subscribers said, I wish I could give them credit for who it was, but they said about, th their comment was on our video where we took our pig out the process, their comment was she only had one bad day. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And and I don't I don't knock pork processing facilities, but they are not um, those animals are not cared for as well as ours are. They are not um, looked after as well. They are in much tighter quarters, and that's fine. That's still all. It's still all humane, but um, I, I guess. To, to the question, how can, first of all, people say, how can you do that to your pet? They're not pets. They, these, these to us, they have never, they are never pets. Mm -hmm. These pigs that we get are from a friend of ours that owns a show facility. All his pigs end up being eaten, uh, I would say 99% of them, um, at, at the end of their life. But um, we take the, the ones that don't make the show quality we buy them from them, and that's what we use. They are never pets, and we don't go at it with that mentality. So that that looking at it through the lens of them being a pet is is a flawed way to look at it. We don't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. That's that that's one answer to that question. How can we claim to love them and then kill them? That's hard. To, it, that's hard to, to to answer that question. But I, I can say definitively that we do love them. We do care for them. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. Maybe love is a strong word. Yeah. It may just be that we respect them enough yeah. as a living being to care for them, feed them. And yeah. I, I don't. But in the in that video, because I don't you, love we, the meat burns. You said you did use the word love. That's and what I, and as you were it. saying that yeah. though, so maybe maybe, maybe, maybe that's circle, that is a wrong. Yeah. There are people in this in this modern society that choose to um, farm out. The various things or most of the things in their life that they don't want to do right mm -hmm. people not everybody works on their own vehicle they take it to the mechanic not everybody you know handles their own garbage they have a garbage man that does it not everybody um etc cetera, etc cetera. um so we have chosen to try to be more self-sustaining and handle to the biggest extent possible the to keep as much of our the food that we consume to be raised here on our property. Right. And, and so not everybody has that ability. Not everybody mm -hmm. can, can do that or un even understands that or even wants to do it. I think it's funny because I was just sitting here thinking of a couple things. I hope I can collect my thoughts. But some of the comments on there were very harsh. And Tobin's response is always, do you eat meat? And I would say 95% of them come back and say yes. Yeah, yeah one, like, one person well, said, I'm... I know I'm a complete hypocrite, but how? Because I eat meat, but how can you do this? So my my challenge to you is, if if you have such a big opinion about us raising animals and harvest, or you know, harvesting them for our benefit, I, I challenge you to look up how your animals were raised that go yeah. to the food to the store. Because yeah. I promise you, I can promise you this: the quality of meat that. I have on my place and my freezer right now is 
is hands down night and day Superior. exponentially better than what you will find at the store and yep. that is because of the quality of care that they were given while they're on our property yep. so i think it's it's it i challenge you if that is your response is well how could you do that and you do eat meat then i i i do look at look at it from that lens to see is it is it because you put blinders on and you just yeah. don't want to know how it happens because i can promise you ours is a lot more humane yeah I think that, 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 that a lot of people processors. do do that. They put, put they don't want to they don't want to know. And that's other thing is you know like um, yeah you know go to find a local um, place where they raise chickens for meat. Find a local um, you know pork processing facility or pork raising facility. And go visit it. It it, um, it would open your eyes and it it, it would. It would either make you become a vegetarian. <laughs> Or, or, or consider maybe yeah maybe doing it yourself but in, in you know um yeah or take up hunting you know take up maybe i mean there's uh, there's another homestead income uh a channel i was looking at recently they were they live in town and they raise quail in a, in a shed behind their house and they raise those quail to eat and they raise hundreds of them they sell them eat them and so you know um there's lots of ways to to source your own uh food um, so I, I just challenge anybody that, that's against it to, to to look at it um, and not not hide from what's happening. Not hide, you know. Um, you're paying somebody else to, to raise it for you. You're paying somebody else to process it, kill it for you, and all you do is just buy it at the store and put it in your mouth when you eat it. You know, that's. Um, On that note, you know. A lot of people there's two things some people respectfully we had a comment that said are you truly self-sustaining me if you didn't like raise everything from like because like it was a question of the meat chicks yeah you didn't raise them on your property and, no and i respect that yeah. comment and i said to them absolutely if we had the ability and the place to do that in the room we would do that hands down um so i guess self-sustaining can be a kind of a broad term i understand in the homesteading world self-sustaining means and preppers and all that yeah. it's it means you were completely relying on your own stuff but there is a part like this year we will process our own meat chickens we have um a secret <laughs> channel coming a lot of people guessed right yeah. a lot of people didn't guess right um they're gonna come and they're gonna help us that's gonna be hard for me that is yeah. i have already I, we took those to the process, the ones we had last year to the processor and that was a horrible experience for me. It was the most traumatizing things I've ever seen and I don't think it was humane the way they did it. No. And I told him I didn't even want to raise them anymore because I didn't want it to be inhumane the way that it happened. Yeah. Um, but those are, yeah, those are going to, we're going to, we, we bought them as chicks, mm -hmm. we'll raise them, we will slaughter them and process them here on, on our, our property own. On our, with the help of friends uh, that have done it before um yeah i have to wrap my brain around that that's going to be a little bit tough yeah. and the same with the quail we'll yeah. do those just ourselves after the chickens at some point yeah so my my point to that is it's not easy and i don't think it's supposed to be easy to be honest with you i think when it becomes easy and you don't have emotions some sort of an emotion tied to it then you don't really care anymore. Yeah, I guess for me, like to wrap, kind of wrap it all up yeah. is, um, you know, there's, you know, and we're, we put ourselves out there on social media, and we're mm -hmm. big kids. We get, I mean, you know, we could go, we could sit here and, and go on for hours about ugly, hateful comments we get, and that's fine. Um, we put ourselves out there, and, and we we can handle that. Uh, but all I all I say to anybody that wants to hate on us for that is, um, don't you know? Don't knock it till you tried it. Um, don't um, don't automatically put us down for the way we choose to do things in our life and how we choose to try to be more self-sustaining and more aware of where our food comes from, more involved in the food that we eat and we raise. Um, and it just, it may not be for you. That's fine. But um, just don't um, be open-minded to the fact that it can it, it, it can exist outside of you, and, and um, it's something that 
we struggle with, we can't explain 100%. We can't, you know, put it out in a way that it completely makes sense, but it is something that we, um, that we, <laughs> it, 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 I, don't, I don't know where I'm going. I'm trying no, off. I think I, I think to that point though of putting ourselves out there, and we're big kids. Just because we put ourselves out there, and just because we open ourselves up to this world, does not give anyone any right to be just downright hateful. <laughs> because there have been many a conversations that we had that have been very respectful in their comments. Some of the comments we sat back and we were like, okay, you know what, they do have a point. So I do think if you did come at it from a curiosity standpoint where yeah. you wanted more questions, we'd be happy to ask yeah. them. Um, I, I do, I still admire the comment saying, are you truly self-sufficient? And she came in very often and said, please don't come at me. Yeah. And I came back yeah. and I was like, no, I respect your opinion because she yeah. didn't come at it from... A negative and, way and to answer that i mean you answered it but you know it's a journey mm -hmm. we're, we're on a journey to try to make you know every year we're moving more towards that you know maybe one day we will be raising our own animals from from the ground up but you know if even we go back 100 years ago 200 years ago when people were more self-sustaining they traded services and traded for a, they may have traded for a hog for you know something else you know oh, so yeah I, we've become like, a very like a wimpy society yeah so it's easier to put blinders on and throw stones at people when you don't know i mean ha how how we have evolved into this very puny society of where we're at it's a little disheartening because yeah if you go back to history hundreds of years ago how do you think they survived yeah i mean they didn't go to the store and buy a prepackaged thing of yeah. pork chops they raised I, it or they traded yes, their neighbors for it. Yes, and so I, I don't think there's anything wrong with us getting back to that. Yep. So, you want to go? Are you wrapping it? Okay. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm just going to say, uh, like, I hope, I, I don't know, I don't feel like we did a, a, a fantastic job of answering, the, the, ultimately answering the question, but hopefully we gave you some perspective and some point of view and some context to why we do it and how we feel about it. I don't think there's an answer to it. I think the best way that you can you can say it is like he just said. This is our perspective, and this is why we do it. Yeah. There's no solid, concrete answer to any of it. For sure. And it, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna let you wrap up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I'm not getting political, but the president of the United States stood up on a podium and said that there will be food shortages in the future. He said that. Mm -hmm. I'm not making that up. Um, I'm not telling you my political beliefs behind that. I'm telling you a fact of what he said. Another fact is there have been several mysterious um, food processing facilities, food storage facilities, major ones that have mysteriously caught on fire, burned down, been shut down. You know, we are we are teetering every day on major catastrophe, a major shut down a major the great whatever. depression time anything two. anything and i'm not i'm not a doomsdayer we, we you know we live our lives but knowing how to source your own food knowing how to raise your own food knowing how to do all those things if if the if s h t f happens s h t f yeah all the preppers know what that means no i don't tell me <laughs> I was not thinking that's what you said. So if, uh, <laughs> if that happens, um, we we will, we are not going to be prepared for that. No. But we will be ahead of a lot of people yeah. who stick their head in the sand and don't want to face those things. Wrap it up there. Yes. So if you would like to have a conversation, you're more than welcome to comment below. Or you could message us through Facebook or Instagram. We'll be happy to have conversations with you. Um, tell you what we know. Tell you what we know. Tell you what, and uh -oh. we are not experts. We don't know a lot. I, I tell you, just like I do my pool videos, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Every day is a learning experience, yeah. trial and error. We'll be happy to discuss it with you. We're not asking you to change your opinion of how you feel about something. That would not be right of us. But what we are asking is for you to do the same to us and respect our opinions and how we feel about something because we will respect yours. Now, don't come at us. 
Like, don't come out as hateful because you won't get anything back other than Tobin being a little smarty pants. So, um, but we would be happy to share with you anything, our perspective and our, yes, what we're going to do. So, and, and, and just to be, just to, just to put this out there, 98% of the people have nothing but awesome things. Oh yeah, for sure. And our kids and our family and what we're doing and they're supportive and we thank y'all very much for that. Um, but some of you peeps on Facebook are mean. <laughs> They, they can be, but like again, we're big. I kids, said but, some of them, but again, two percent, I guess. We got the door open. We got June bugs coming in, so we're y'all right calling June bugs? I'm about to ask. I always <laughs> try to ask y'all a question. Do y'all call them June bugs? Yeah, I bet they call them June bugs everywhere. I'm just also yeah. thinking that you look really small, and I'm leaning forward, and you're leaning back. It's like the bass picture, you know, <laughs> when it's like really close and. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everybody that's supported us. Uh, thank you to the critics who are constructive and, and nice about the criticism. Um, we we re we do appreciate that, and we're we're not right, and we 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 like having open conversations where everybody's open minded, and um, it can be nice about it. So if you want to do that, comment like Shannon said, comment message. Thank y'all for watching. Wrap up, man. Thanks for watching, and um, what are you doing? My head. Oh. I don't know why. Thank y'all. Bye.